This video was sponsored by Skillshare. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Eric, I hope you're having a great day. Thanks for joining us. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make an absolutely fabulous Spanish charcuterie known as Lomo Curado. This is a dry cured pork loin. Dry curing whole muscles is the best place to start if you want to dry cure meats at home. It's the easiest of all the dry cured projects. It's gonna give you the greatest success rate and it's gonna give you the confidence to propel you forward as you begin your discovery in the vast world of charcuterie. And speaking of discovery, today's sponsor has something to say about that. Skillshare was kind enough to sponsor today's video. And Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for people like you and me. You know, the creators and the curious. These classes are designed to fuel your passions, no matter what your passions may be, whether it's photography, video editing, writing, or in my case, cooking. At the moment, I'm following a cooking class called Italian Classics Made Easy, Perfect Pasta al Pomodoro, Learn with Italy by Chef Nicoletta Grippo. What I like about this class is that Chef Nicoletta explains her techniques in an easy to follow, easy to understand, and most of all, easy to duplicate sort of way. Skillshare is tailored specifically for learning, so there's no ads, and there's new premium classes being launched constantly. And here's the best part. Right now, Skillshare is running a special promotion for a limited time, where the first thousand of my subscribers who click the link in the description box below get one month free trial of premium Skillshare. That's right, you can turn your downtime into uptime or something creative. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Let's make Lomo Okay, the very first thing we need to do is get our hands on a pork loin. This should be a relatively easy cut to get from your butcher. Just ask for a pork loin, and it's a long muscle, so you may want to have him cut it to the appropriate size, but that's what it's gonna look like. If you have a farm or you're butchering your own animal, this is what half of a hog is gonna look like. And it's broken up into basically four primals. You got your shoulder, your loin belly, and your ham or your hind leg. And we're gonna be looking at the loin and the belly primal today. And to separate the loin, we're just gonna remove the spine and remove the ribs. And then I'll show you how to extract that muscle. And I want you to notice how the tip of the ribs form a bit of an angle at the very bottom. So we're just gonna take our knife and create a cut along that particular angle. And then very gently and very carefully, we want to remove the ribs cutting as close to the bone as we possibly can. Once the ribs have been lifted off the meat, we're just gonna go ahead and remove the spine by cutting along the spine. And it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing too complex here. And we can just remove that whole section. The knives that we're using to butcher this particular hog are known as the G series butchering knives. These are Taiwanese butchering knives. This model is the G4. The very small one I was using is called the G3 mini. Anyway, Jinda industry sells them. They're fun knives to use. And if you want information on these knives, you can check out the link in the description box below. All right, now that everything's squared up, this is what we're looking at. You could take what you have here, roll it up, season it, make a really crazy porchetta out of it, or separate the loin, which is what we're about to do. And to separate the loin, just find the very natural seam between the belly and the loin, cut all the way down through the skin, and that loin muscle just rolls right off. It's the entire top muscle of that piece. We're gonna remove the skin and a little bit of that fat cap, and here's what we have, our pork loin now removed. You could do your boneless pork chops. You could do a roast out of this. Oh, and if you want to see my hack to the classic Italian porchetta, give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment about it. So here is what we're going to be using to make our Spanish lomo. And notice I just cut it way down. I've got other plans for the rest of it. So now that we have our pork loin, the very first thing we want to do is weigh it. This is the most important step in the process of dry curing meats at home. You got to weigh your muscle and you're going to want to jot that weight down. So in our case, it's 1,137 grams. Head over to my website 
and uh, you'll find a link in the description box below to this recipe and type in the weight of your pork loin. The recipe will automatically calculate how much of each ingredient you need to add. So I tried to take, you know, all the guesswork out of this particular project so that you can have the highest rate of success. As far as the spices go, salt is your number one ingredient. This recipe does not include any type of curing salts because it's not necessary. Uh, so salt is going to be the number one most important ingredient. That's what's going to cure your meat. The other spices are there to accent the pork and bring, you know, different levels of flavor. The method of curing that we're using is called the equilibrium cure. And that simply means that we have a very specific amount of spices that are added. We place that into the refrigerator. Those spices get soaked up into the meat. And over a period of days, your meat will be fully cured. Using this method of curing is not only super easy, but produces the most dependable and reliable results. So once you add your seasonings to your meat, you're just going to want to massage those in for a few minutes on each side. And then you're going to place this into a vacuum seal bag. If you don't have a vacuum seal bag, you can place this into a Ziploc bag. And because we're using the equilibrium method to cure our meat, we want to use up 100% of our spices. So make sure you take any spices that didn't stick to the meat and dump that into your Ziploc bag or your vacuum seal bag. And then just give it a little shake to evenly distribute those spices, at which point I am going to vacuum seal it. Now, you don't necessarily have to vacuum seal this, but you do want to try to remove as much air out of your bag as possible. So how long does this need to cure for? Well, every muscle is different, so we need to measure it. And although the loin is cylindrical, in this vacuum seal bag, it's a bit flat. So we're at two inches at the thickest part, and we're going to run over to a website. Now, there's going to be a link in the description box for this website. And if you go to that third tab, right around the center of the page, it says brining time. Click on the brining time tab, and it'll take you to this page. And all you got to do is input the data. So our thickness is two inches. Inches is already checked. The last option is to click the shape of the muscle, whether it's flat or cylindrical. Ours looked more flat, so I'm gonna click the flat option. And the answer tells me to cure it for five days. Now, it also recommends an additional 20% of cure time to guarantee that your muscle is cured at the very center. So I, across the board, add 20% which means we're going to be curing this for at least six days. So now that we know how long to cure it, all we need to do now is take that bag and place it in our home refrigerator. And because the cure time is relative to the size of your muscle, everyone's cure time is going to be slightly different, but generally between 7 to 21 days is the amount of time that your meat needs to cure. Now, while this is in the refrigerator curing, what I like to do is massage the muscle every day, take it out, flip it, and then place it back into the refrigerator. And this little step just ensures that, that our spices get evenly distributed throughout that muscle and that it cures evenly. So no big deal. Like I said, I do this once a day or at least once every other day. So for me, six days has passed and my pork loin is completely cured. And it's now time to move on to the next step. And the next step is drying. We're gonna be using a special wrap from the sausage maker called Dry Aging Steak Wraps. These wraps were originally designed to dry age beef in your home refrigerator, but after some experimenting, I've found that they can produce some pretty decent charcuterie. These wraps are unique in the sense that they control the moisture loss and they don't allow your meat to dry too quickly, which is absolutely critical because the refrigerator isn't the most ideal environment to dry cure meat as the humidity is too low and there's too much airflow. So we're gonna go ahead and pull one wrap out, set it to the side and get our pork loin ready for the wrap. As we remove the loin from the vacuum seal bag, notice there's not a lot of juice and that's totally okay. The muscle has firmed up a bit though and every muscle is unique in the way that it cures. I am gonna remove the bay leaf because that doesn't dry cure so well. It's not like cracked pepper or chili flakes, uh, but we are gonna leave everything else intact and I'm not gonna wash it down. I do want the surface of this loin to be slightly damp because that's how this plant-based wrap adheres to it. So if you need to add a couple drops of water or some white or red wine, feel free to do so. You just don't want it soaking wet. You just want, like I said, you just want it moist. Uh, and then we're just going to wrap it with this plant-based material. As we make each fold, I want to try to press out any air pockets uh, as best I can, and then I'm going to trim off the excess. And save the excess, because those pieces right there, that's great for, you know, your tenderloin, your filet. You could do duck prosciutto with those small pieces. So definitely don't throw those away. 
And uh, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and continue trimming and wrapping. And this particular wrap doesn't need to overlay, you know, excessively. So just a little overlay is fine, like I'm doing here. And you can go ahead and move on. So once you have the entire thing wrapped, we're going to put our netting on it. And that netting serves two purposes. The first and most important purpose for the netting is to securely fasten that plant-based material against the meat. And that's going to keep it nice and tight during the crucial stages, which is the first few weeks of it drying. The second benefit is that it's going to hold its shape. And as you can see here, the loin has more of a cylindrical look rather than a flattened look like we did when we cured it. So I'm just going to go ahead and tie off both ends of the netting, which is just going to help to form up that muscle even better. And now that it's all tied off, this is what it looks like. And the last thing we need to do to your pork loin before you place it back into your refrigerator is weigh it. The weight of your pork loin right now is going to give you kind of a starting weight. So you definitely want to jot it down because based off of what the weight is now, you'll know when it's ready. Right now, mine weighs 1,131 grams, and I typically target a 35% weight loss. So when this particular muscle reaches 735 grams, it is ready to eat. And that's it. It's just as simple as that. We're just going to take that label and attach it to the muscle. That way I know when it's ready and I don't get it confused with the other projects that I have. And uh, we're going to place this in our refrigerator. So if you don't have a place to hang it, you can always place it on a drying rack where you get airflow on the top and bottom, just like that. And this is just going to go in our home refrigerator until we lose 30 to 40 percent weight. Just so you know, for whole muscles, I generally try to target a 35 percent weight loss. So it's been about eight weeks in the refrigerator, patiently waiting. And you can definitely feel that the muscle has firmed up quite a bit. <laughs> so let's go ahead and remove that plant-based wrap. And as you can see, it's coming off effortless. If uh, you're having trouble getting yours off, you can run this under some cool water. And within 30 seconds or so, that plant-based wrap actually turns into a gelatin and just completely disintegrates. So it's really easy to get off of your muscle. This is what our finished product looks like. It looks great. It smells just like a dry cured piece of pork. Let's go ahead and give it a center cut. See what it looks like on the inside. The inside of your muscle should be firm throughout. It shouldn't feel raw. It shouldn't feel soft. And when we open it up, everything looks exactly as it should. The fat is nice and firm. The meat is nice and firm. Uh, I am noticing a little bit of a darker area at the bottom. That's just where it dried a little bit faster than the rest of it. Not a big deal at all. This is just one of those things that happens when you dry cure meats in your refrigerator, mainly because the environment's not ideal. But like I said earlier, not that big of a deal. Matter of fact, we're probably not even going to notice it. So let's go ahead and slice it and see how it tastes. All right, time for my favorite part of all these videos. We get to taste what we've made. We've got our dry cured Spanish loin. Let's give it a little smell. That smells incredible. The texture looks great. Very similar to that of prosciutto or culatello. Loin is a very lean cut. And so I like to leave that extra fat layer around it. To me, it reminds me of lardo, like a, like a Spanish version of lardo. It just melts right in your mouth. If you don't like that much fat, you can trim it off before you cure it or just leave a tiny little bit. That's totally up to you. As far as the texture goes, if you like your lomo a little softer, some people do, you can pull it at 30%. If you like it a little more firm, you can let it go till it reaches 40%. Uh, and it does drastically change not only the, the way it tastes, but the way it feels in the mouth. So you can experiment with how long or how short you let it dry in your refrigerator. All right, so let's go ahead and just give this a little a little taste. Let's see what happens here. Mm. Mm. That fat just melts right into it. It's so delicious. When you add that extra layer 
of fat, it really just adds a whole nother dimension to this charcuterie. But most often people will trim most of it off. This is delicious. Mm. The pork really comes through and you have those classic Spanish flavors. It's smoky, it's a little spicy, but not overwhelming. It's actually very well balanced. Mm. <laughs> That's incredible. I hope you get a chance to make this Spanish dry cured loin. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And if you found this video entertaining, helpful or informative in any way, give it a great big thumbs up. That's always appreciated. And if you're new to the channel and you're curious about sausage making, dry curing meats, all sorts of DIY projects, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you get notified of every one of our uploads. We post new videos each week. We got Celebrate Sausage season two right around the corner. I don't want you to miss it. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.